going to pick up right from where we left off with our Mongoose Movies project. So, da, 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 da. let me swing back over into our lecture and we'll get going. All right. So before we went to lunch, let's talk about what we did. We were in the middle of our uh, feature where we are going to be able to show a form where our user can input uh, a new movie. This form is going to live on this slash movie slash new route. We build a link that will take us there. Uh, da, 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 da. If I start up NodeMon and go there, you are going to see that I get a console log. That's not what I want. There we go. There's our link. <clears throat> so we've got a link over here. We click on it. And now, because we have a route and st have stubbed up a controller function, so we have our route for slash movies slash new. And then we've got a controller function that corresponds to that route. That is where this console log is getting run from. So. Let's go ahead and pick up from there. Just stop that load. There we go, much better. All right, so we are now going to actually write out this uh, controller function. And then we're going to build that view that we are calling here. All that we want to do, the only functionality that this controller function is going to have is to actually go and render res.render a page that we're going to create. It's going to reference a new directory in our views called movies slash new. Dot EJS. So let's go ahead and make that. I want to make directory movies. Nope, not what I want. Views slash movies. In that directory, I'm going to touch a new file called new.ejs. So you should see. In this movies directory, you have a new.ejs file. Beautiful. Here's new.ejs. I'm going to add some boilerplate in here. We're also going to create a link to a style sheet. You'll see we actually have in here style sheets, style.css. Also see we have some other style sheets in here. We'll cover those later. For now, we're just going to use this style.css file. All this is doing is giving our body some padding, giving us a font. It's going to be 14 pixels and also be these font families. Next, we have an anchor tag and we're giving that a color. It's all that the style sheet is doing. So let's make use of it. We are going to 
link in here, make a CSS link to slash style sheets slash style dot CSS. Why does this work? Anybody? Anyone? This is working, or rather will work, because of our middleware. This right here, this app.use express static. We're looking in our public directory. which is right here. And everything in this is going to live on our slash, whatever this directory name is, route. Again, style sheets is not something that's like unique here. I could come in and as long as I'm renaming this to uh, Pop-Tarts. As long as that's what I've got here, and we're good. Clearly, that doesn't make any sense to undo that. So, any directory you place in this public is going to be accessible on slash whatever that directory name is. And then of course, any files that we've got in there. It's really important that you don't have things in this public directory that would clash with your actual routes. Just fair warning. All right, once we've got this in there, we're going to grab this entire form from over here. We'll talk about it once we've got it, but I don't want to sit here and just write a form with you all all day long. So we're going to just copy it right out of the lecture, throw it into our code. I'm also sending it in lecture chat as well. Here, we've got an H1, cool. We have a form. We'll see we've already given it an action and a method. We'll talk about that later. This form, all of the things in here are going to correspond with elements or fields rather that we put into our uh, model. Let's talk about that. We have first, an input, our first input has a type of text and it has a name of title. Remember yesterday, this name is super, super, super important. This name, what we have here should match what we have in our model. You'll see that this theme continues throughout this form. This release here, this name that we're giving this input matches what we have in our model. The MPAA rating. This input, the select has a name of MPAA rating. Right there, that lives in our model. We are also going to have a cast. And we're going to tell our user to separate the actors with commas. So we have this cast here, cast name. And I bet you can kind of see where this is going. We're going to use 
or commas to be able to turn this string that a user types in here into an array. We'll cover that soon, don't worry. But that's going to give us an array of strings. We also have now showing over here, and this is going to be a checkbox. You're going to see that checkboxes are a thorn in our side. They're going to be a little bit interesting to have to deal with. But as we go and build this form, and we manipulate the data that we get on our controller, we'll kind of see how this plays out. But this now showing is going to be a Boolean. Finally, we have a button has a type of submit, this will actually submit our form. Any questions about this form before we move on, except for this action or this method, anything else in here? Just a form. All right, so we have our form. Now what we should be able to do is go to this page. We should be able to, if our server is running, gotta always run your server. Should be able to go to this page and there we go. It's for a new movie. And we see the form we just constructed. Sweet. So from here, we want the user to be able to submit this form. That's going to be the next feature that we implement in our application. When the user submits this form, I want to save the data that the user has input to my database. So let's check that out our second request. You'll notice, again, back over in our new.ejs, our form, we have this action and we have a method. We've pre-put this here, but it aligns with our chart. Oh, well, the chart. Whenever we want to come to our chart to figure out what we need to do. Start with our card operations. We know that what we want to do is create. We're already displaying the form. Now we need to actually handle the creation that comes from the user submitting that form. So that is going to be a post request to slash movies. Whenever you're creating, it's always this post request. Again, that's to create a new post. Our controller action is going to be create, and it's going to come with data on it. We're going to have something on rec.body. That's what that means. This has data payload. So that's not what I meant. Back. What we're going to have here. determined our route, already set the action and the method. We already have our form. Step one and two are done. Woohoo! Great. Next, we're going to define the route on our server. So let's swing over into our routes. Here, we're going to have post. This is going to go to localhost 3000 slash movies. Therefore, we have a router.post to the slash route. Why is this to the slash route? 
because we're in the movie draft. Exactly. 100%. We already for free in this file have slash movies. So we don't need to put it here. And then what was our controller action? Uh, create, create. Create. Exactly. We haven't written our function, so we're getting this error. Route.post requires a callback function, but got nothing. Then come in. Let me stub up this controller with function create. All of our controller functions have the same syntax with rec and res. And again, Sandy check. Make sure it works. And we can't forget to export our function. So now, whenever I submit my form, as long as I've hooked everything up correctly, as long as my route's good, I'm calling the correct controller function, all of that, I'm going to see this console log. So let's do it. Test, test, test. Beautiful. Add a movie. Testing. We see our console log right here. All right, it's crashed. That's really cool. Not worried about it. So next, what we're going to do is come in and actually code out our function. have an error with my connection string. That'll be fun. We'll get there when we get there. Let's build this controller function while we're here. We have in here a requirement to bring in our model. We are going to need to have our model now. But before we do that, Jenny, you had a question? Yes. Um, when I click on the niche, well, I have a 404 error when I'm clicking on the new movie link. And I thought okay. it was related to my route, and, but I can't find what's what's wrong. Um, Let's check it out. Um, let's see. Ah. Interesting. So it looks like you're trying to go to slash views slash index.ejs. Can you hit back for me here and oh. hover over your link? Oh, yeah. That would be caused by that. You're trying to go to slash view slash index.ejs. That's not what you want. Uh, you want the actual route to our file that we've got, to the, our actual page that we've created that matches the route that you've defined. Okay. So back over in your movies route, yep. The route that you've defined is to 
on line five. Yep, this is all right. We just need to change our link to go here now too. Because right now your okay. link is going to slash views slash index.djs. Okay. So this should instead be... Uh, it should be slash movie. Well, slash movie slash new. Yes, exactly. Okay. All right. Thank you. Totally. Good job. Uh, Kat, you had a question. Yeah, I had it working and then I was playing with that drop down for the movie rating and uh, it kind of just crashed. How did it crash? It just, it just like went into like when it's not connected. You, you look oh, like you know okay. this is gonna happen or something. I don't know that this is going to happen. <laughs> Um, could I see, can, can I see your screen? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And it just goes to this now. Okay. Could I see your terminal? Just disappeared. Uh, um, you're in your output. You're yep. 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 Oh, okay, circling. Okay, there. There you go. Trying to pull it up. Um, I think you have the same issue that I'm having, where something. I'm working on it. I'm going to get you guys a different connection string to just use instead. So give me just a second. We'll try that. Cool. Thanks, Ben. Um, cool. try try hitting Control C for me, and run Node Mod again, and refresh your page. I'm guessing you're good. It's just the um, connection being down. Yep, you are good. Something's up with our MongoDB though. So okay. Ben's working on it. It wasn't any, yeah, because I didn't change anything on here and then it suddenly stopped working when I was like right. yeah, playing yeah, around yeah. with it. <laughs> so there's, there's nothing wrong? There is nothing wrong that you have done that I can see. Okay, all right, just checking. Thank you. Of course. Anybody Anybody else you want to try the questions? one I just sent you in uh, instructor chat, see if it works, and if so, just share it. Okay, cool. Give me one second. Uh, Abby. Um, I have almost the same problem as Kat. However, when I input when I when I input like test, it just crashes. Um, it is going to crash right now because we do not have. Um, we don't have anything on our backend yet, uh, that's actually handling what happens whenever we submit this form. That's what we're going to do next. Um, it might also be potentially crashing because of our, um, lovely issue that we're having with, um, Alice potentially. So we'll get that taken care of. And sort it out. Uh, let me look real quick. Okay. On this new connection string. Hopefully, this will work for us. Did you add? Uh, uh, it's going to have Star Wars in it, but that I can delete matter. those. Uh, just go ahead and change the all. change the movies to something else, like movies one twenty four, and we're golden. Okay. It will matter. Because if you don't do that, oh, you're going to have problems with the cast. Because yeah, yeah, it, yeah. yeah, cool. Yep, yep, yep. So cool. change it to that. Share it. You should be good. Uh, By the way, like just this is working. FYI, put a one week uh, limit on that password, so that password won't work after a week. So share it all you want. Beautiful. All righty. Um, Could you push really quick if you have it? I would love to. Yeah. Thank you. There is our new connection string. If you're having issues where you're getting this error right here, 
So like this, it's a really, really long error that you're seeing here. It will look like this. If you're having this error here, blah, 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 blah. Use that connection string I just sent. I'll send that in lecture chat. Cool. So after that, you should be good. You won't have that error anymore, hopefully. Cool. So we are going to continue on from here and we're going to write out this create. This is going to require access to our model, the movie model that we've already defined over here. Remember before, whenever we wanted to mess with our database, we still had to import that database in here. Same thing going on in this instance. We are going to import movie from models movie.js. Notice how we're using object destructuring here to get at the movie that we're exporting from our model directly. We're exporting this object that has movie on it. And here I'm accessing movie directly. I'm not doing import star as something. I'm just accessing the movie directly by getting these curly brackets around it. It's your object destructuring. So we're going to need access to that. Let's talk about our checkbox. Our checkbox is going to be a fun thing that we're going to have to deal with. I'm going to go ahead. Let's just console log rec.body. Remember, we have that middleware in server JS that is putting anything that we're submitting into a form, anything that we're entering over here, It's putting that on rec.body. So it's turning this form data into something we can actually use. So I'm going to click on add movie. And here you're going to see, oh, look, it's our object, our rec.body object. And here you can see all of the different items I put into this form. I'm going to actually make these a little different so we can actually see some real data on here. Beautiful. So here, my title is test. The release year, 2000, right there. My MPA rating is G. I have some cast members. And then I've also got this now showing to on. We'll talk about that here in a second, because that's kind of weird. What is that? What is the deal with that, right? Christopher, you had a question? Yeah, so you may, have, you may have said this before, but where is the body linking with this information? So this is coming from this new.ejs. So because we've called this input, we've given it a name of title, that's why we're seeing title down here. So we have this input is set as title. So we see a key called title. And then its value is what the user has put into this form. We have another key called release year. That's coming from this name. And that value is what we're setting that to. 
We have that MPA rating. We have the cast, all of that. It's all coming from what we have named these things over here in our actual inputs. So our middleware is receiving this form with those names on it, with a name and a value associated with that name. This express.url encoded thing is taking that information and it's putting all of that on direct.body, just like this. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Cool, yeah, totally. Notice how this stays consistent through your model, your EJS, right here, here, and right here. We need all of these things to be the same. We need a title from our form so that whenever we send this data to our database, it knows that the title for the movie I want to have is going to be test. Mongoose is looking for keys, title, release year, MPA rating, cast and now showing this object that you get from rec.body is going to be structured exactly like your schema that you're defining in your model and again that's happening because these names that we've given these different inputs align with the keys, the field names that we have in our schema. All right, so moving on from that. Let's talk about this now showing how it's set to on. I'm going to uncheck this checkbox. Let's see what we get. Oh boy. Nothing at all. We have title, we have release here, we have MPA rating, we have cast. We don't have now showing. And then suddenly again, Uh, suddenly again, we have now showing. That's set to a value of on. Checkboxes are really, 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 really annoying to work with. Word. Because by default, this is what you're going to get from a checkbox. If the checkbox is unchecked, you're not going to get anything at all from it. Nothing. Not even... Submitted, not even sent. It's like it doesn't exist. And if you have it checked, you get this on. It's like totally, totally worthless. Like, okay, cool. Like, why is this on? This is, again, just the way that the spec is written. Whenever you submit a form with a checkbox in it, now show the checkbox value is set to on. That's just the way it is. So remember, our now showing should be a Boolean. Because this is either true or false, right? It's either now showing or it isn't. So what we need to do is find a way to coerce this value or no value at all into true or false. This next little bit of code that we have here is going to do that. So in our controller, just to kind of get us 
what we need. I'm going to console log here, rec.body.now showing. You don't necessarily need to write all these console logs out. I'm just doing it to make a point. So feel free to kind of sit back. We've kind of interacted with um, this not or bang, the exclamation point. So let's see what happens whenever we do that. This bang, you'll remember, flips something's value to either true or false. Let's see what happens now. I'm going to submit. Go back. I'm going to submit this now showing unchecked. And what happens? So whenever now showing, whenever we submit this form without this checkbox checked, now showing is undefined. Remember up above, whenever I don't check that checkbox, that goes away entirely. Therefore, its value is not undefined. So that makes sense, right? And then you'll remember what our bang does is do the opposite of something, not. So this here, reading as not rec.body.nowshowing. Since undefined is a falsy value, whenever we try coercing that into a Boolean, so false, and then take the not of it, what we're going to end up with is true. Again, this is just with a single bang. We're taking a falsy value, undefined, and then we're taking the coercing that into a Boolean, and we're getting its opposite. So undefined, falsy, false flips to true because of the bang. Let's check the box. What happens now? Check the box. There we go. <laughs> if we check the box, the now showing is on, right? We saw this before. Whenever we have the checkbox, now showing is set to the string of on. Then we take that, coerce it to a Boolean. Since this is a string and it's non empty, it's going to coerce into true. Then we take the not of that, the inverse and it becomes false. We're in a pretty decent spot here. We have a Boolean value. It's just the wrong Boolean value. We're getting true whenever we have this unchecked. We're getting false whenever we have it checked. So how do we flip these Boolean values? I need to trip this from true to false. I need to flip this from false to true. Add another exclamation point. Yeah, 100%. I can do bang, bang. Bang, bang, now showing. And now, whenever we come through, refresh this. If I submit this form without this checkbox checked,
come on, come on. We're going to see, oh, wow, that's a uh, perfect. Yes, we have now showing is undefined. We know that if we bang now showing, it's going to be true. If we bang, bang now showing, it's going to be false. That's what I want now showing set to false. Say I check this box, submit this form. There we go. When now showing is off, I'm taking the bang of now showing, the not now showing set to false, bang, bang, not showing, or not, not now showing, <laughs> it's going to be set to true. This is the code that we need when we're dealing with checkboxes. You're just always going to use this by default. Whenever you're dealing with a checkbox. Dave, yes. Um, so I know that you explained that the like, I, I guess it would be described as like a resting state or standard state of the language that without the two exclamation points, it's undefined. Mm -hmm. Why would, I guess my slight confusion is like, I do see how the two exclamation points like flips it, but it almost seems like, you know, you're doing three rights to make a left kind of like maneuver. Like uh -huh. why, why would the, if I understand if it's just like how it is, but I guess if you had like further explanation, why it wouldn't automatically define it as such. Are you saying why this is like, why is this on, not on? Like, why is, are you asking about that or are you? Yeah, because, yeah, because the, the exclamation point, you know, is used to like, whatever flip or mean like not this thing that I'm about to define. And by going yep. not, not, I, I guess I'm confused how it goes from on to undefined to then false to true, you know, and then true to false. It, it just like, it seems like a convoluted way that like it, I'm confused why the original way does not already operate as such. You would think so. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that would be fantastic. Unfortunately, it like we had to work within the constraints of how the spec is written. And, you know, back when we were building form inputs, not us, but whenever, you know, the industry was building these form inputs, someone was like, oh, yes, this makes sense. And then no one spoke up or said anything. And now we're living with their mistakes till today. And, and the... <laughs> Then, then also further, why is the response to turn it into like it? Sorry, I know I'm stumbling a bit. I'm just trying to like You're formulate cool. like cool. the, the totally correct cool. response to it. <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah, now yeah. even even further, it's like well, then if that was the original, you know, state of said response being on or undefined, wouldn't flipping it with a not produce undefined on instead of a Boolean. Um, so what is happening here whenever we have right. just one no, bang? I, I see it in the, the console log. I, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. I know yeah. How, what it's doing. I guess it's just okay. like, it seems like one mistake and then now this additional mistake like corrects it, but it doesn't really make sense how it corrects it. Yes. So this is this is something that you will whenever there's issues like this this is a common pattern of how we actually go about fixing that problem whenever you know uh, kind of introducing that idea here that because this is designed in this particular way because of how the spec is written we have to and we want to turn this into a boolean value this is how we go about doing that um, this is going to be a, of course, I'm not going to think of any other example off the top of my head where you would be doing this, but 
I absolutely know that you do do this in other places. Um, I, well, I bet one of the other instructors could butt in and potentially offer something there. Um, but this is going to be kind of this common pattern for getting us out of problems like this, where we're like, okay, I need a Boolean. I'm given this value or nothing at all. How do I go about like making that from this useless string of on into something that is going to fit and that makes more sense with our actual data structure. So, so it's more, it's more kind of like an illogical response to like in illogical the past. State. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. 100%. Yep. I guess um, if I could um, add on to that, what, like, why does it not work with one bang? So if we get one bang right, all this does is coerce whatever we have into either true or false, right? So we are, whenever we have on, this is truthy. This is a truthy value. So it, that truthy value is going to be co uh, coerced into a true, right? Oh, I get it. Yeah. Okay. And then, so whenever we take not true, not true. then that's okay. false. Right, right, that's why it's backwards. Yep, exactly. <clears throat> cool, cool. All right, so again, a fun jaunt through standards and how we get around those things. So now I have the actual value I want. Where do I need to put that? Well, this goes back into rec.body dot now showing. So let me console log this. Uh, body four. Rec.body body after service running it is let's add a movie so whenever i have this checkbox checked when our server receives this request i mean here's our before and then after i alter this data after i alter rec.body body not now showing I want to throw it on rec.body not dot now showing again. And now I've changed my now showing into something that my database can accept. Because my model in here, I've set now showing to a Boolean. And now we have a Boolean value. So this will go into our database just fine. Next, let us move on to dealing with our cast. Remember, our cast members are an array of strings. So we need to turn this right here, this text field that we're allowing a user to just type in and separate actors with commas. And that is going to be accomplished by using a string method. We need to split these into different strings. This is going to be kind of a fragile implementation here, and we'll go into showing why we don't actually do this in production applications. So we're going to have something a little fragile, a little weak that we're starting with. But we're going to kind of iterate on this by the end of this application. It's a really good demonstration of you know having 
kind of the correct type of uh, I mean they're showing your users the correct thing and also how we can construct that on our end. But we're starting with this iteration. So we're going to say that if we have rec.body.cast, I'm going to reassign rec.body.cast to rec.body.cast. Remember, this is just a string, so we can do string methods on it. One of those is split. So I think you have cat in your if statement. Of course I do. Well, <laughs> love it. Thank you. All right. So somebody, anyone remember what split does? What the string method split, what its job is? It makes an array. It, allows it, it makes an array. Cool. So we're making an array and each one of those array items is going to be determined by what we have inside of the split. Just for clarity here, I have a comma and then a space. Just in case you can't see that, comma, space. So here, back in my form, whenever I have a comma and space, we're going to split each one of these items up and put those as strings into an array. So the result here after this step on line 12 is going to look like rec.body. Rec.body.cast before is going to look like this. rec.body.cast after is going to look like this. I guess I could get that comma. <laughs> it will. We will have an array of strings. That's what this line is doing. Let's check it out. Move this console log down. This will be rec.body after all of this work. I'm going to add this movie. And you'll see there's our cast before, just a string. And then here is our cast after. We've got an array of strings. Perfect we are matching exactly what our model wants, an array of strings. Now, let's talk about why this is a fragile implementation, why it's not good. Right here, this language says separate actors with commas. Okay, cool. My natural inclination of doing that is saying, okay, cool, let's put a comma and a space. Your user's interpretation of this may be kind of more literal. Okay, separate the actors with commas without the space between them, right? If you do this, because of how we're splitting this, back over in our controller, because of how we're splitting this, we had to have that space here. If I submit this now, we still end up with an array, but it's an array of a single string of me comma you comma us. Eventually we're going to iterate on this app and get this to a better place where we don't have this fragile input.
All righty. So, I do want to show you this method of creating a movie or creating any resource. But after I show this to you once, we're probably not going to really use it a whole lot from this point. Uh, we kind of prefer to use the mongoose methods that we get. But one way that we can go about creating a movie, saying const movie equals new movie. That's going to take in rec.body. And then we're going to save this movie, movie.save. This is how you will see this in the future, how we go about saving a single document. This movie is going to be a document. Let's look at it. Pencil.log. Movie. Let's check it out. I'm actually, let's get rid of this movie.save line for now. I'm just going to create a new movie instance. So let's run NodeMon. Uh, refresh my page. Not what I wanted. There we go. So I'm going to I've created a test movie. I'm going to add this movie. Let's see everything we've got. Here, we've got rec.body before. This is how our data was submitted to this, to this uh, controller function. After we did all of our manipulation, all of our logic, this is what we're ending with. Using rec.body, I am creating a new movie. Here's that new movie. And you'll notice we have something new on this, an underscore ID. It's an object ID. Whenever we're running this new movie, we are getting an ID, an underscore ID assigned to us by default. Here is the unique identifier for this document that I've just created. Because here I'm looking at a document. That's what movie is. Notice how there's not a whole lot of difference between our movie document, how it's represented, and what we sent to our server. It's actually exactly the same thing, except we've got this ID on here. So that is our document. Whenever we get back from break here in 10 minutes, we are going to save this document into our database. See you in 10 minutes. All right. So
now we've created our movie. And we can go ahead and save it in our database. And that'll make it real. Right now, this movie, we're just making a new movie. That's all that's happening. We're not actually doing anything with it yet. That's going to be done with movie.save. We have a function here. A function can take in an error. We could also optionally add in, uh, actually, we have access to the movie. Never mind, just error. <laughs> so once we have this movie, we're going to say if there is an error, then what I'm going to do is turn res.redirect. So be it slash movies slash new. Remember, I could split this across lines. Like so. Totally valid. Could totally do it. Either way, I'm just keeping this on a single line. Get used to seeing the syntax a little bit more from us. Been keeping it kind of light for now, but this is going to be pretty common through the rest of this unit. If that doesn't happen, then what I want to do is for now redirect back to slash movies slash new. It's because we really don't have anywhere else to go. This is the only page in our app so far, right? Again, I'm going to go ahead. Let's just, let me just write this. So this is the, this is kind of new to us. I'm just going to write this so you have kind of a base of familiarity as to what's going on here. So what we're kind of used to, what we have seen so far, what's old at this point is going to be movie.create. Remember our create that we had back in our to-do application? This is that essentially same thing. We would have rec.body here. And then we would have a callback function. Again, that would be an error first callback function. We'd optionally have access to the movie as well. And then everything in there would be the same. Everything that we're actually doing. So we have the new way that we're using. Again, we won't see this too frequently. But I do want you to know that you can do it. It is something you will see. This is what we're going to be doing more often. This follows the pattern that you're kind of used to. You only want one of these. You do not want both pieces of code here. Or duplicate movies in your database. That would not be great. But just to kind of give you a base to draw upon that you're kind of more familiar with, that's what this is. So. Let us actually put our first movie in our database. I'm just going to do this test movie. It's here, it's handy, it's ready for us. Let us go ahead and we'll say it's PG. And it's showing right now. Although the release here is gonna be wrong on that. It's 2022. 
I'm going to add this movie. You'll see that was redirected back to movies slash new. Hopefully we didn't have any errors. <laughs> what you should see over here, uh, da, 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 da. where am I going? Um, what you should see now is back in your .env, what we're going to do is grab our connection string. As everything after the equal sign here. Got to start after the equal sign, right after it. This MongoDB, blah, 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 all the way to the very end. Don't leave off the Y on majority. Got to have all of this. We're going to copy that. And then we're going to talk about an extension that you all have seen before. Whenever we first did all of our extension downloads on day one, one of the extensions that we got was the Azure Databases extension. This extension is going to allow us to look at databases, both on our machine and remotely. We're not actually utilizing Azure to be able to do this. This is just an extension that runs on our local machine that happens to be called Azure Databases. This does have additional functionality that we could connect to. We're not going to do any of that though. The only thing that we're going to use this for is to connect to and see our database. So what you're going to do is over here on your left sidebar, you should have this Azure extension. If you do not have this extension yet, you're going to want to go and get that from the extensions marketplace. You're going to come to extensions. You're going to search for Azure databases. I already have it installed. Icon looks like this though, the little container deals, and then you're going to install it. After you do that, it should appear over here on your left sidebar. So once we have that, we're going to click in here. And then we're going to click on this plug, this plug up here in this databases bar that we've got. You only see this whenever you're hovered over the side panel. If you leave it, it goes away. So you gotta hover over it and you're going to see the plug here. That is how we're going to attach our database. We're going to click on the plug. You're going to select MongoDB. That's the database we want to connect to. We want to connect to a MongoDB database. So we click on that. And now we need to enter a connection string for our database account. Paste in what you copied from your .env file. Again, this should not have the database underscore URL equal. It must start with MongoDB, blah, 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 blah. Have your entire connection string here up to the very end. And you're going to hit enter. And you should see a database. I want to walk through all of this again. So once you have gotten the Azure databases extension from the extension marketplace in VS code, you're going to click on the Azure icon over on the left. You're then going to click on this plug that is in this bar right here. Again, this is only visible while you're hovering over it. So you got to hover over it, click on the plug, Click on MongoDB 
and paste in your connection string, excluding database underscore URL equals. Then you're going to hit enter. You should then see under attached database accounts, you should be able to click on that and then you'll see your database you just connected to, or your shard rather. Inside of that, you'll click into that. That's where your actual database is. And then you'll see in here, we have a movies collection. We click in there. And this is where you should see your movies. We have quite a few people sharing this one. So you see a lot of documents in here. Again, our hierarchy here, Movies124 is our database. Movies is our collection. These items, each one of these are a document. We can click into these individual documents and we can see them in our database over here on the right. This is the movie I created. Has a title of test, has a release year of 2022, an MPA rating, and a cast. And also no shown. Dan. Um, I'm not seeing any of my inputs in my database. Okay, cool. We might have a fun issue that we can tackle then. Let me see your screen. All right. So nothing's in the drop down here. I just entered something into this over here. Try another one. Uh, yeah, let's see it. In here, but nothing, nothing at least. Could you, could you refresh over here for me? Uh, so over on the left where we've got databases, mm -hmm. uh, there's the little refresh icon that's kind of next to the, yep, perfect. Oh, there we go. There you go. Cool. Thank you. Of course. All right, just to re-demonstrate that to everyone, because that's going to be a common thing, is that you're adding something to your database and it doesn't show immediately over here, right? So this little refresh right there. That will refresh your current view of your database. So now, what we're doing is creating a movie. Um, everything that I talked about here is in the lecture as well. Hey, Dave, uh, quick thing. Yeah, totally. Uh, I, I realized that my um, database URL is showing though on the stream. Of course it is. I shared my screen. That's fine. So um, was it actually showing? Uh, yeah, because I had the .e, e, uh, .env uh, folder showing when I shared my Oh, screen. you did? Okay, cool. That's totally fine. Okay. Um, we can, we'll work with that recording and make it, we'll alter it. Make sure it's good. Something. You're good. All right, cool. Sorry <laughs> about that. Accessing your, I'm accessing your database right now. <laughs> <laughs> Screwed. <laughs> David, would uh, you mind pushing? Chance. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to push. It's been a hot minute. Thank um, you. All right. I am pushed up. Uh, as we've been adding files before you pulled or before you try to get my code, make sure you do a quick uh, git add just to make sure that all of your files are being tracked by Google because we keep adding a bunch of stuff in here. So 
that will help reduce any errors that you might get. All right. So we have a fun little bit in here. We are going to talk about actually using Mongoose to read data from our database. And here you can see that we have a lot that we can use to query by. We could find a movie where the MPA rating is PG, where the release year is later than uh, 1970, where Bob Hope is a cast member, where we're sorting by the title, we're only getting three of them, and then we're only getting the title and the release year. And then finally, we're executing a callback. We could do something like this. You could build applications where this is going to be something that you might want to do. We're not going to start with this though, but feel free to recognize that, hey, this is where this can go. We have a lot of ability to get a specific or really specific items out of our database should we ever have the need to. But we're just going to start with the basic find, find by ID and find one. We won't use find one as much. More find and find by ID. So you're going to use these methods. And again, you have a familiarity with these methods already. Remember with find in our to-do's project, find if we pass it an empty object, we are going to get back everything. Pass in that empty object, you'll get back all of those items on this variable. Same thing with find by ID. As you've seen already, we're using the ID and we're getting a single item out of it. You have familiarity with how these functions are structured already. So lean back on this knowledge that you already have as you're constructing all of your uh, all of your queries that you're going to be making. So I'm going to give you all a little bit of a break here. I know we had took one uh, just not too long ago, but I'm going to give you a small one because you're going to be doing this activity in a group for quite a bit. So you're going to be in a breakout room with a random group. In that breakout room, you're going to implement index functionality where we display a list of the movies that we currently have in our database. So your task as a group, I have good pseudocode here, you're going to identify the RESTful route. You're going to notice the, the pseudocode really follows pretty similarly to the steps. Once you've identified the RESTful route, you're going to add the UI to trigger the request by adding an all movies link next to the new movie link that is already in 
our views slash index.ejs right here. We already have, uh, that's not right at all. We already have this new movie link. You're going to add an all movies link. You're going to define the restful route. You're going to stub up and export the movie controller's index action. After you've tested it, make sure that you've constructed everything correctly up to this point. You're going to build the index action. You're going to use the movie model to query for all movies. Make sure you're using an empty query object that is just an empty object to retrieve all of the documents. You're then going to render a view slash movies slash index.ejs view. You're then going to create an index.ejs view that's going to display an HTML table. Below, you can find most of the markup has already been created for you. There are comments in here. You'll see, hey, this is an EJS comment for the first time. This is going to be your first time interacting with this. This is your squid with hashtag. <laughs> here, you're going to iterate through over all of the movies using a for each. I want to make this a little bit more clear. Let's say movie.title. Let's say movie dot release here, let's say movie.mpa rating and movie.cast.join. That feels a little bit better. I like that. Make sure you're closing your for each. I'm going to give you 50 minutes to do this instead of 45, get an extra five. Before we do that though, I'm going to send you all on uh, let's say a seven minute break. Are they just going to come back from the break into their rooms? I like that idea. Yes, they will. Cool. It's like magic. You guys it's have fun like with magic. this. This is your first like foray into actually writing your own EJS and it's exciting and you should treat it as such. And if you struggle, that's fine. This is meant to be, that's why we give you 50 minutes. Like realistically, when you're writing your projects, this will take you about five minutes. So 50 minutes is a lot of time. You're going to get used to this. It's just we give you extra time now so you can play around with it. If you don't get something, console log it. If you're not sure what data you're sending, print it to the screen. You know how to do that. You've shown, you've been shown all the tools to see how to do that. Tim, you got a question? Yeah, I'm not seeing anything show up in my database. You're not seeing anything show up in your database. We've got to fix that before you can do this. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see your screen. So I console logged a couple movies, but nothing in here. Um, all right, cool. So, um, let's see. Could I see your, uh, after line 19, mm -hmm. um, could you add in, uh, so after line 19, so uh, go to the end of line 19, hit enter for me. Could you console log error? And now try submitting your, uh, a new movie again for me. Oh, 
Doesn't look like we have an error. Fascinating. Errors null. Could you go back over to your database in over here and hover, click over here and over where? Sorry. Right where you are, just click. Oh, okay. Uh, and then could you refresh up top above this? Fantastic. Uh, go and open that again. One day. Man. We're lost in limbo. Yeah. Um while that refreshes, I'm gonna go with oh no oh, oh, oh. Connection, connection, timed out. Could you refresh for me? Again? Again, yep. Uh, 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 uh. Mm -hmm. Oh, looks like you might have movies. Click in there. There we oh go. Oh my gosh. Look at all those movies. Fantastic. Oh, wow. I love cinema. Thank you. Of course. David H. Um, I am having connection issues again. It keeps on coming in and out. But I don't know why. I'm going to stop the recorder so that y'all can share your ENV files safely. And I'll start it back up after we finish this exercise in an hour. So if you want it going for any other reason, David, just yell. Cool, we'll do.